Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. This is another paid request, this time from Matthew. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topics, reactions, reviews, re reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for a documentary that's on. Uh, that's the wrong way to say a documentary. It was a news program back in the day on. NBC called Desperate Days in Blue John Canyon, the Aaron Wollston story. You would know this if you've seen the film 127 Hours with James Franco, because that's the guy that went through that ordeal. Now, I love that movie, 127 Hours. It's been forever since I've seen it. It makes me want to watch it again. It really does. In fact, I want to remind myself I do really want to watch that film again but I know James Franco pretty much canceled and such but I still like that movie quite a bit but for those who didn't know the story Aaron Walston was hiking in the Canyon Lands National Park thinking in Utah he was kind of in this getting down into this very thin crevice crevice if I learned how to say it right but the boulder shifted and it landed on his arm and his right arm was stuck and he was trapped there for six days and pretty much this is a news program with Tom Brokaw where they talked with Aaron Ralston and they go back to the scene of where it happened so you, you hear a little bit about his life they talked with his mom his dad his, I guess his boss, and a lot with Aaron Walston, and showing sort of the the scene where it all took place, where, again, his right arm was crushed by his boulder, he only had like two burritos, a little bit of water, and a pocket knife, and you just really get the sense of just what this guy went through, where... You look up and you're literally in a hole. Rescue party would never be able to see you because they pass by and you're so deep in this hole and this kind of little, from the top, plain view, it'd be just like this little line going through the ground. It's like you're pretty much buried in there. And like it talks about Aaron Walston, like he read Into the Wild, he was into climbing, he did solo mountain climbing. And what he would do, try not to panic, chip away at the rock, he wasn't doing anything because he had this dull pocket knife, cheap one. He was trapped in a standing position so he couldn't sleep, he had to create this pulley system so he could sit down from time to time with the rope that he had. He's not able to sleep. At one point he didn't sleep for 90 hours, which I couldn't imagine that. And he had a video camera as well, so he records some messages. And you notice in the messages, there's one bit that they show footage, but the rest of it they play the audio parts of the footage because something about the family, they didn't want to see the video footage and relive that so but you hear audio and he's very calm as in probably uh, because the dehydration and hypothermia uh, because you know, just talk like this and kind of be a matter of fact and that's really stupid that I'm out here it was really stupid that I didn't tell anyone where I was going. It was one of the first big rules to do. And at one point he thought, well, should I do this? Use my knife, but the knife would not break the skin to get his arm. He just stripped himself up a bit. To barely break the skin with his stupid knife, as he says. And you know, at 90 hours awake by that point, he only, with a few bites of food in his belly and no water for a day at that point, just this 
just this painting of a picture of just I would not have survived it I could tell you right then and there I would not have been able to survive this ordeal so the fact that anyone could survive this is pretty commendable sleep deprived hallucinations at one point lost almost 45 pounds which I can't imagine losing 45 pounds I don't even know how that's possible with that shit. But I guess, you know, four, five, six days with just two burritos and all the exertion, sweating, and all this other stuff being out there, being having to stand all that time. Just the ordeal. The tenacity you have to be to keep going. He would see this raven pass up from time to time. Felt like every morning. Just how how long the nights were. Because he couldn't sleep. Because he was so cold. And you can't really sit down. and so, Like you can kind of with the pulley system. But still not enough to be able to sleep. And... I don't know if this was in the movie. It might not. If it was, I forgot about it. But I remember being taken aback when he described at one point as he's you know, four or five days in. Maybe this was the sixth day. He took the knife and he plunged it in. It was like his thumb and it went in like a knife through butter. And he's like, what? And this gas would come out and it was decomposition gas so his arm was decomposing while it was there and now he's able to cut through the skin but it won't cut through the bone so he had to torque it and just torque it and just get it ripped off and then cut you know once he did that just the way he's describing it you just just made me grimace, just made me hurt all over, and just, like, doing this, literally, as he's describing it, almost like a phantom feel of it, and all this is, I see this nerve, and I gotta cut the nerve, and even just touching it, you feel this burn, and this, with, and the one knife was so dull, he had to use the smaller knife, the two-inch knife, and he had to hack away at his arm for like an hour. <sighs> Just really commendable what the guy went through. When, you know, desperate times, as a desperate days, what are you going to do? What would you do to keep yourself alive? Because I guess, if you think about it at the time, it's like, well... I wouldn't die either way, so I better die trying to get free instead of just sitting here. But just the, the luck as well, to see about you, how much luck was involved with this was crazy. What I mean by that is, to get your arm out, to not bleed to death, to be able with only two burritos and a few bits of water in your belly to be able to walk all this point through the canyon. Thankfully, there were a guy and his two kids, which I don't know, the, this little nugget of information was stuck in my head that they gave what they had, water and two Oreos. <laughs> Those Oreos must have tasted like the best Oreos in the fucking world. <laughs> the best Oreos of all time. Maybe by if to this day, maybe as like a box of or, you know package of Oreos everywhere, and <clears throat> then the luck of not bleeding to death, the getting out of that canyon, the luck of finding these two and the these three individuals, a guy and his two kids, and then a chopper happens to be around that area. Because that, by that point, the boss knew that his work, his 
the guy had not come in. The mom was contacted and she tried to contact people. She got into the guy Aaron Ralston's computer search and rescue, which they even said they assumed they would find a body. And that apparently they're ready to call it off or go back for gasoline or something. And lo and behold, boom, there he goes. Got him on. And about how the guy, even though he went through all this, he still goes climbing mountains. Which, in a way, almost infuriated the fuck out of me. Like, come on, dude. Like, but I get it. It's He's not going to let this stop his life. He's just going to be much more cautious and tell people where he's at and stuff, but, you know, this is his dream. I'd be like, you know what, uh, let me work at, uh, I don't know, what kind of retail do you have? Let me just work a much more safer, calmer environment. Well, it won't be, well, calmer than, maybe retail wouldn't be it, but like, let me work somewhere else, you know. But, yeah, it, it is what he likes to do. He's doing it with one arm, and uh, the other is pro prosthesis, or the hook. Definitely very, very commendable. So again, being a fan of the movie 127 Hours, it was nice to hear from the actual guy. The actual guy's actual story, the way he described it, being at the site... Him breaking down a bit because he saw that at one point he wrote his name and then his date and his baby death and an RIP. And then before he left, he scratched that out. Kind of him clearing out his basement, so to speak, be able to move on from that. So, I mean, the fact that to not give up, to keep going, to survive, it's a very admirable in a weird way uplifting story the worst of the worst can happen to you but if you don't give up you can live another day <clears throat> and uh, who would not appreciate that message I certainly do so, yeah, this is really nice to see. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate it. Thank you for the paid request, but uh, I didn't even know this existed, but this was nice to see. You know, this, the guy, the true story behind that movie, so. It's on YouTube. Again, Desperate Days in Blue John Canyon, the Aaron Walston story. Definitely worth a watch. And then, no, there's, it, because it was NBC, there's no gore. You don't see anything of the arm. You never see the arm stuck. So if you if you screamish about that, you don't have to worry about that. There's no blood. There's no there's none of that. So if you screamish about that, you don't have to worry. It's more just him describing what happened. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.